In CSS, we normally have inline elements and block elements. And sometimes we change that on purpose to display flex to create a flexbox layout inside of that element. But recently, I started to use inline flex more and more because it is the perfect solution for a specific problem I face all the time in flexbox layouts. You see, the values inline or block are the two most common default values on HTML elements. We know that inline level elements follow the flow of text. That means if we add a bunch of inline elements to our website, then these elements are aligned next to one another within the same text line, they wrap onto another text line if the window gets too small, and they will be influenced by the line height property just like any normal text element would. So when we need margins or we want the element to start on a new line, we normally change their display to block. Here we can control a bit more about the element's alignment since we control everything ourselves. Also, the width of block elements is 100%. You can see that if you change the background color of an h1 heading, for example. But why is this important? To understand the value inline flex, we have to understand how these display values control the relationship between elements. You see, both block and inline are values that affect the relationship between sibling elements. It controls the alignment and size of the elements that are on the same level in the HTML hierarchy. But when you change the display of an element to flex, or grid for that matter, then you do that not because you care about the sibling relationship, but rather to control the layout that is inside the current element. The display flex of a flex container is used to define the flexbox layout for all the elements inside, for all the child elements. But at the same time, you're implicitly changing the relationship of the flex container to its siblings, maybe without even realizing it. Here's an example where this becomes a problem. I have a container with a heading, a text paragraph, and some links. And of course, the h3 and the p tag are both block level elements. The anchor tags are inline level elements, which is perfect for my layout because I want the links to be side by side within the same line of text. But now I want to add an SVG icon inside. When I do that, the SVG and the text of the link are not aligned perfectly, which means I have to use Flexbox to center the content vertically. Changing the display to Flex will allow me to use Align Item Center, which does the job. But as you can see, it's also causing a problem. The links are spanning the full width and they start on a new line, even though I wanted them to be side by side. And that is because upon changing the display to flex, these links are no longer inline level elements. They are flex elements. I want to use flex to control the relationship to the child elements, but I also changed the relationship to the sibling elements to block elements. On the sibling level, flex elements are very similar to block elements. We can see they start on a new line and they span the full width of their parent. So, the solution is of course, display inline flex. This would allow me to maintain a display of inline, which will put them side by side on the same line of text, but at the same time, we can define a flexbox layout for the child elements inside. It is a mix of the two values, combining the best from both worlds. If you would like to learn a CSS trick for grid layouts, where you get a responsively wrapping grid with only one line of code, then watch this video right here. My name is Fabian, and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.